total solar eclipse is one of nature's most awesome events. It's also one of the most accessible. And there will be one in three months in North America. What is happening? Where do you need to be? And what do you need to do to keep your vision safe? Let's dig into it. What is a solar eclipse and why is it awesome? A solar eclipse happens when the moon casts its shadow on the Earth, and if the moon completely covers the sun, you'll see a total eclipse. If you're in the center of the shadow, it gets as dark as twilight, and you can see the sun's outer atmosphere, the corona. On April 8th of this year, there will be a total solar eclipse. Paths will cross North America from Mexico to Canada. The moon will partially cover the sun over much of North America, but only a narrow band will get to see the sun completely covered. If you're in the central part of the band, you'll see a bit over four minutes of totality. Ideally, this is where you want to be. Now you have to answer one critical question. Are you going to try to see totality? If you're already on the path of totality, congratulations, you don't have to go anywhere. However, if you're not, then if you want to see totality, you have to get to the path of totality. What are the biggest obstacles to enjoying it? 99% of it's weather. The bane of eclipses are weather. High hazy clouds aren't a major problem. You should probably still be able to see the eclipse thicker clouds and you'll miss it. So where's the best place? Wherever it's clear. Some areas will have a better chance of good weather than others. For example, in the United States, some of the best odds are in Texas. Now, if you're traveling, hotels are already booked up. Also, there will likely be some traffic in some areas the day before the eclipse. With that out of the way, how do you enjoy the eclipse? So long as you have the right equipment, you can keep your vision safe. But what do you need? And what if you don't want to spend any money on things? You don't need much to enjoy a solar eclipse. However, no matter how small the sun appears, it is incredibly bright. You need eye protection if you're looking at the sun directly, or you can look at it indirectly, which I'll get into later. It's worth repeating, looking at the unfiltered sun will destroy your eyesight. If you add a filter to a telescope, make sure it's supposed to be used for solar observing. Make sure it's secured, and for goodness sake, make sure it's supervised. You don't want a kid looking at the unfiltered sun. During total phases, you don't need any filtering. However, the first bit of sun at the end of totality is very bright, so you have to be careful. Don't look at it directly through a telescope. And finally, let's talk about optical versus digital paths. For example, DSLRs versus mirrorless. If you're looking at the unfiltered sun, for the latter, you fry the sensor for a DSLR you fry your eye. The same thing applies to telescopes. When in doubt, don't do it. There will be other eclipses, but you only have two eyes. Solar glasses are so cheap. They're basically a no-brainer. Go ahead and get them now. I'd recommend getting a 10 or 20 pack so you can share them with friends and family. Make sure they're ISO certified though. Solar binoculars are nice, but but they can be tricky to point at the sun. They block so much light that all of the sky will appear completely black until you're pointing almost directly at the sun. Don't get ones with too high of a magnification. It'll be hard to find the sun. If you have normal binoculars, you can add filters, but again, you must be careful. If you want to take photos, magnification is the name of the game. For the partial phases, you want to fill the frame. For totality, less so. You will want to put on an ISO rated solar filter on the lens, but be careful that the filter can't come loose accidentally. If you have a telephoto lens, that will probably work. However, it has to be a fairly substantial telephoto lens. Not necessarily huge, but I'd say 300 millimeters might be the bare minimum. I find a zoom lens gives me the most flexibility. Now finally, you can use a telescope with a solar filter. If you don't have a telescope and want one, and have about a $500 budget, order the Seastar S50 right now. It's a great beginning friendly telescope. It's perfect for the partial phases. However, for totality, it won't be as useful. Now what if you don't want to spend any money, or at least not much? There are options. If you have an old telescope sitting around, you might be able to use that, even without a solar filter, but it has to be the right kind. This is a Newtonian reflector. It doesn't have a sealed tube and it wasn't very large, so heat buildup was less of an issue. Refractors and SET type telescopes should never be used like this. Also, since you're just projecting the sun's image onto something and there's no filtering, you have to be super careful that no one tries to look through the telescope directly. If you're willing to get a lens filter, I was even able to use a kid's telescope. Again, it has to be supervised, but it worked. No award-winning images, but it did the job. Another even safer option works if you're near a tree. If you see circles of light under the tree when the sun is shining, those will turn into crescents during the eclipse. If there's pavement, you don't have to do anything. If there's grass, you can put a white sheet or poster board on the ground. Cheap and easy and no one will accidentally go blind. Finally, you can even make your own pinhole projector with a cereal box. It's a great craft project. Similar to the telescope and tree examples above, you're looking at a projection of the sun's image so you don't go blind. Just make sure it's used correctly and someone doesn't 
try to look through the pinhole. Whatever you do, make sure you test things out well before the eclipse. You don't want to be testing out new gear the day of the eclipse. Trust me. Keep an eye out for more videos before the eclipse, and if you have any questions about the eclipse gear or preparation, leave them in the comments below. And if you found this interesting, check out this time lapse I made of the 2023 partial solar eclipse, or watch this live stream where I go a little deeper into some equipment you can buy.